Hello, my name is Shirley Pretty. I'm an artist in the area. I grew up in Huntsville, so I'm really basically home. But we opened the gallery here in 1986 and we ran it for 33 years. And that's where I learned to paint, through my artists who came and went, filled our gallery with the most wonderful art, and by osmosis, I learned to paint, and now I'm a full-time artist. When we ran, uh, ran the gallery, our artists were very willing to share their expertise, their talent, their God-given gift. So we hired a few of them to teach for us. And we bought the old Catholic church and set it up as a studio. And over 16 years, we brought in artists from all over Ontario. And those artists taught our local people. And over those years, we instilled a love of nature and art in so many people. And I learned by osmosis. I learned by watching and listening. I did never teach, but now I am teaching because I learned so much from that. And I teach at the library. But over the past few, few years, we've had as many as 20 artists come through the library. I just finished a painting, many of you will know, Fairy Falls. Probably the most difficult one I've done. And I had help from a teacher in Toronto. But you have no lack of stimulation you can go everywhere from rushing water to still lakes, most gorgeous trees, and of course, fall. You can also go down and paint the dam. Some of my students have painted buildings around um, the village, like Miss Nell's for the character, and the old Ellis house here on the corner, the big yellow one, all been painted. There are many heritage homes in uh, Bayesville. Ours happens to be one of them. It was built in 1890. And then my husband and I decided rather than tear it down, we would restore it. And for the next 20 years, we restored. Then we added on. We added the color. And it's been a focal point for many of my artists. It's tough to paint. I have many photographers come in and photograph it because of the color schemes. And then we bought the park across the street and made them into Bob's Park. So when you come through the, to the village to see the Maynard House, the Pretty House, and the Old Manse Gallery, you'll see Bob's Park. We bought the gallery, the property that is now the gallery, from the Mitchell family in 1986. Chris Mitchell was an artist, an uh, incredible artist, but very emotionally disturbed, and he died tragically. His wife sold us the gallery. And we feel that Chris has come back to look after us and make sure that we run a good place because there's evidence from time to time that he's been there. A picture has moved or a painting has moved from one wall to another and my partner denied moving it and I know I didn't move it. I think Chris thought it, was, it would be show better in another place. Lights were turned on in the middle of the night. We had a lady appear with a teapot for sale to match our china that we had on display. We'd never seen her before. The gallery was closed for the fall. She sold us the teapot, never saw her again. We think Chris brought us that teapot because we needed it to complete our set. And he's our resident ghost who looks after us. One year when we were having some renovations done, the um, builder was banging and crashing and on the back wall. And off the wall from our display cabinet came some of our valuable china. There were teacups broken and egg cups. And the teapot that was sitting there landed on the floor upright with the lid on and not a crack out of it. I think Chris was there that day too. Um, we've had guests from time to time at the gallery sleeping over and two particularly have felt the presence of someone in the gallery. One young man felt that he was being held down by the shoulders in his bed. Another one heard the chains on the stair. I don't believe in chains, but they felt they heard somebody on the stair. My son thinks that the ghost is probably a young girl. One of our workmen thinks he saw a young girl sitting on the end of the bed when there was no one there. And these stories go on. Some of them you have to believe.
Richard Robinson, um, known in the area basically as, as Dick Robinson. We've been on uh, our property here at Dickey Lake uh, for 40, well, coming up 44 years. When I was thinking about this, we've been here almost about a third of the time of, uh, it's 150th for Baysville, we've been here almost one third of those years. So, Well, I started uh, oil painting uh, in 1977, there was a, uh, a local artist by the name of Richard Caron who lived just outside of uh, the village on the uh, 17 Acres Road. And um, he offered a course to Georgian College. It was uh, just a two-week course. And several of us in the, in the vicinity uh, took that course. And um, to me, it was uh, magic. He, was, he, he showed us how to build trees, and I've been building trees ever since really got me started selling my work in 1987. Uh, my wife and I were both high school teachers, and at that time, it looked like we would be, be on strike. And I thought, well, wow, I better take this more seriously and see if I can not sell some of these paintings. Drew up a, a pamphlet and walked around the lake and delivered pamphlets to everyone and uh, put out my shingle saying, uh, Cottage is on canvas, uh, commissioned Dick Robinson to to preserve your Muskoka memories. And um, it really took off. It really did. Um, uh, it really got me uh, out and about, uh, exploring all the different lakes in the area and, and getting to know, th to know them. It was, uh, it's been a wonderful experience. I still do it, um, not as much. Well, this area, of course, region of Muskoka is the area for uh, for anyone with an artist uh, bent, um, because the majesty of uh, nature is all around you, and you don't have to uh, look very far before you can come up with a uh, wonderful composition. It's pretty hard to um, improve on what uh, Mother Nature offers us, but uh, yeah, we can. We can. We are certainly inspired by by what we see around us. So if you're ever out for a drive pop down to my little studio here and, and have a look at, uh, at my latest work. You'd be most welcome. Hi there, my name is Jesse Villamare. And I'm Susan Brown. And welcome to Follow Me North Photography. Based in Baysville, Ontario. Yeah. <laughs> So we have made Baysville our permanent residence, uh, now offering our photography workshops in and around the area. We've been um, basically touring people into Algonquin Park a lot of the time, teaching them the basics of ethical wildlife photography, as well as landscape photography. Um, in my early 20s, I started as a journalist, and I quickly found that I loved taking photos more than I liked writing the stories. So I quickly pivoted for the last 10 years, I've been working as a creative producer and commercial photographer. So working for companies like 500px, Stocksy United, and now Shutterstock Studios and IATC 411 uh, based out of Toronto. And of course, Follow Me North, our company um, doing wildlife workshops, primarily based in Algonquin Park. I've always wanted to live up here. I kept driving up here for for years doing photography. It was in 2013 where I finally came across this beautiful property here in Baysville. And so I made the move up here in 2018, right after I actually met Susan online. Um, so we met, I posted a photo with my girlfriends every year. We would go camping in Algonquin Park. And I posted a portrait of us with the hashtag Algonquin Park. And Jesse found the photo and quickly sent me a message. Um, just asking to meet up if I wanted to do some wildlife photography and I think our first date was the 125th anniversary of Algonquin Park. We spent the weekend here at the cottage and going into the park 
and I think it was pretty much history at that point. I was up here every single weekend and quickly moved up here full time. So that's going on three years now. A lot of our clientele seem to come to us when they, they're overwhelmed with two things, with Algonquin Park, the size of Algonquin Park is huge, plus the overwhelming facts of these, these DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras that are of today. A lot of people seem to, to think they can buy one of these and think they can capture those images that they see maybe in National Geographic, which we're all drawn to. So I think what we're trying to do is kind of create that safe space for people to actually come and learn their cameras and learn about photography, wildlife, landscapes, and learn how to basically use them. Yeah, um, I think we're trying to make, give practical advice in an ego-free environment. Um, so also working with people that want to grow their own photography business and maybe are struggling creatively on how to do that. Um, so we go into things about business planning as well. Um, we gear workshops completely to the individual person's needs. Um, but we're also here to serve the small businesses within the Muskoka region. So we do custom content creation, we can do custom content planning for your small business. So really um, a wide net of clientele there. And to branch off of that, we've done photo shoots for families, we've done, uh, we love doing pet photography in the Muskoka area. Um, and, and then recently, like we've been doing a lot more, even short-term rental photography, real estate photography. Uh, Baysville's been very welcoming to us. Everyone we talk to in Baysville's amazing. The food is amazing. Every time we visit or have visitors here, our, our, our first thing is we got to go into town and visit. You know, obviously Lake of Bays Brewery. We got to visit Cast Iron and say Humble hi pie. to. And then Humble Pie. We Yummies have, in a jar. Yummies in a jar. Like there's so many good places in it. So when we're not doing photography full time, uh, a lot of times we'll be exploring the area. Um, obviously we will try to explore some of the backcountry areas of Algonquin Park. And a matter of fact, last year at this time, we went uh, canoeing. We only had 36 hours backcountry and we, our goal was to find as many moose as possible in 36 hours. And we were able to find 24 moose in 36 hours. And I had actually never seen a moose in the water and I saw 24 moose in the water. Um, and by the time we had photographed for hours, 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 and Jesse finally turned and said, I think, you know, it's time to go home. I only had a certain amount of days off from work. And suddenly this moose stepped in front of our canoe and just swam in front of us for probably three minutes. And I can't top those photos. <laughs> Even to this day, I'm always looking to top that photo, but it's still my favorite photo that I've ever taken. And then some of the misty shots with the, you know, the moose, all of a sudden we paddle around a corner and all of a sudden you see a silhouette of a moose just appearing in the, in the, in the mist coming up. Oh, it's just, it, it was incredible. Get than no, that. absolutely incredible. So after this interview, we're probably going to actually hop in the canoe and, uh,